Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Uh, when we talk about a brokered convention, of course, it, it, it depends on this. It hasn't happened in a very long time. Uh, people have forgotten. Uh, not every convention picks or historically has picked a nominee on the first ballot. And the trick is the entire primary system means that, at least in the overwhelming majority of cases that I know of, most state delegates are pledged to vote for a specific candidate on the first ballot. But if there's no majority, if nobody wins on the first ballot, then you go to overtime, or usually the normal time, really, is what it is. Today it would seem like overtime. You go to a second ballot, right? Some of these, some of these conventions have gone 20, 50, 100 ballots. Uh, still don't get uh, a nominee. So at that point, the pledged delegates are no longer pledged, and they're supposed to exercise their judgment in other words, bribery or whatever it is, or intimidation, uh, and then they're supposed to come up with a with a nominee. So, uh, and they can also do it by acclamation when they get stampeded. Right? Somebody like uh, Petraeus might be able to do that. Now, let's look at the Ron Paul candidacy, right? Tending now to subside in terms of public uh, interest because of the um, the California polling puts Ron Paul at what eight or nine. Percent, and that I think is um, uh, a, a reality um, exposure for the people that have had various illusions about this. <clears throat> One of the people sympathetic to Paul is Paul Craig Roberts. Paul Craig Roberts uh, had been in the Reagan administration in the Treasury Department, um, and he had put out a thing a couple of weeks ago saying that, that basically Ron Paul's presidential candidate candidacy is the last chance for the United States. Now, it seems to me uh, that is not the last chance by, for the United States by a long shot. Um, so he had mentioned one thing in that, which I thought was interesting, that Ron Paul could could win if his followers would be less devoted to their Austrian school libertarian ideology and allow Ron Paul to be less doctrinaire. So here's, here's what we have. Um, here he says, if Ron Paul's libertarian handlers and support base could escape their ideology, Ron Paul could be much better positioned to win the Republican nomination. And here's what he says is the main problem. Uh, Ron Paul should be defending Social Security and Medicare because they are threatened by out-of-control foreign wars, the bailouts of the banking system, uh, and what he calls money creation. Um, but this is not what he does. And this, I think, is the key paragraph of, of uh, Paul Craig Roberts' uh, analysis. Instead of hitting hard on the serious threat to Social Security and Medicare posed by Obama and the other Republican candidates, all of whom serve Wall Street, the military-industrial complex, and the Israeli lobby, Ron Paul has been positioned both by his supporters and by his opponents as the biggest danger to Social Security and Medicare. This is a tragic, an amazing strategic mistake by the Paul campaign. This is understandable. He says a lot of uh, his supporters are young. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of uh, young people who don't know very much. Uh, they don't understand Social Security and Medicare because they think they'll never need it. But for the vast majority of the U.S. population, Social Security and Medicare are essential for survival, life and death. Yes, that's true, uh, Paul Craig. Uh, a candidate who is positioned as the destroyer of the scant economic protection the American elderly have is not positioned to win an election for president. And the libertarians, of course, hate Social Security and Medicare and say that it's a Ponzi scheme. But Paul Craig Roberts points out, in fact, they are and are viewed as a form of private property. Yes, you pay into this all your life, and you want it for your children. It's something. Uh, it's a. It's a heritage that you can pass on. If you've supported it, you want it to be there for your children. Why should they be stripped of economic rights that you have? So um, he goes through all of this stuff about uh, you know the various libertarian attacks on this, and of course he has to say, "Oh, I'm not attacking libertarians." Libertarians, writes Paul Craig Roberts, libertarians are sectarian. 
and their tolerance does not extend beyond their ideology. Boy, that's that's certainly true. So, uh, America's last chance. <laughs> it's of course it's not America's last chance. But here's the problem with this. This is all quite fantastic. So we're told that if the Ron Paul handlers <clears throat> and the Ron Paul base could put aside their sectarian, extremist, and out of touch libertarian Austrian ideology, right? It's not surprising. The doctrine comes from Austria. What can this ha- ha- apply to uh, to the United States and the problems of the 21st century? But we're told if only they could put aside <clears throat> all of that ideology and that doctrinaire, sectarian, out of touch view, then Paul would have a chance to win the presidency. Wait a minute. He is also the bearer of this ideology. He is ideologized to a fairly well on precisely these points. The reason is not that they have positioned him to be uh, the enemy, the destroyer of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and the social safety net. Is that this is what he believes. This is what he wants to do. They're positioning him, of course. He's also positioning himself. Now, some of the people in this sort of uh, strange atmosphere have written me emails saying, oh, wait a minute, uh, Ron Paul doesn't have any handlers. How can you, he has no advisors. He doesn't need that, right? He's absolute and autocratic in his judgments, I suppose they think. Well, no, he's had uh, Chief of Staff Lou Rockwell, the von Mises Institute. We've got these top honchos, right? Thomas Woods, uh, his, uh, I guess, his constitutional law and uh, nullification, interposition, and secession advisor. And then he's got DiLorenzo, his Lincoln-hating uh, advisor, right? This this entire crew. These are handlers. These are advisors. Um, so the fallacy of this from uh, from Paul Craig Roberts is you're just saying, this would be nice if they didn't have this crazy ideology, but they do, and this is their raison d'etre. And the stuff that Ron Paul says about anti-war and about anti-dictatorship is a sugarcoating. This is not the main thing for him. The main thing for him is the Austrian school. It is to ride those issues as close to power as he can get, to spread those ideas so that he can, in effect, implement the real core program, which is to destroy Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, unemployment benefits, their unconstitutional, Head Start, um, food stamps, and all the rest of it. In other words, to mercilessly strip the American people of their economic rights and leave them nothing but their eyes to cry with, to flay them alive and expose them to the full fury of the financial crisis. So I think um, this is a, um, a, a remarkable attempt to try to, to salvage something out of this, but I don't see how it can, how it can work. Um, and again, uh, we, we can't expect this from a former member of the Reagan administration, but there are struggles going on, and there are struggles that go exactly in the other direction, right? We, we're mainly concerned right now with stopping Walker, right? We're, we're very disappointed in the hacked Democratic politicians that seem to be coming forward. This is the problem. I would pose this to the occupied people. If you don't develop some organic leaders of your own out of your own ferment and your own crucible of mass struggle, you're going to get stuck with Michael Moore and Noam Chomsky or Kathleen Falk out there in Wisconsin or some other guy and they, the polls are now showing both of the two main Democrats losing to Walker. So the working people went out there and did all the work to get the, the, uh, the signatures, and now the Democratic Party hacks that think that somehow it's up to them, that automatically they are the ones who ought to, uh, to be the beneficiaries, of this, but they can't be because they're too uh, discredited and they don't uh, excite the, uh, the support of the, of the people. So there are struggles. And they are precisely struggles for union rights, for standards of living. So, uh, an interesting attempt by Paul Craig Roberts, but I'm afraid one that does not uh, convince. And we'll see you again next week here on World Crisis Radio. Webster's office from Washington, D.C.